government meeting to order. Uh, first thing we need to do is approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. We have a motion and support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Passes unanimously. Uh, move on to item three, uh, public comment. Is there any public comment? Okay, next up we're on item four. Four uh, A. We need to approve the minutes uh, from the April eighth meeting. Have a motion support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. <coughs> aye. Those opposed passes unanimously. Going on to four B. Uh, Enterprise group with the Blackman DDA semi annual report. Welcome. Thank you. Good morning, Amy Guerrero, representing the Blackman DDA through the Enterprise Group. Um, there's not a lot to report, except that there's a lot of information on all of the hotels in the Blackman DDA. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and just for your information, the Holiday Inn, <coughs> excuse me, and Home Two Suites were sold. Those were formerly owned by Bogey Patel. And the new hotels, one of uh, them has opened, Town Place Suites, which has 102 suites <coughs> and four floors. And the second one is scheduled to open in July. Other than that, uh, Chairman Shotwell keeps us updated on airport activities, as you can see at our meetings. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Questions or? <coughs> Excuse me. No. <coughs> Amy, you said something about hotels selling and buying. What was that? Could you please repeat that? <coughs> yes, sir. The Holiday Inn, next to Meyer, and Home Two Suites were built and developed by Bogey Patel, and they have since been sold to another entity. I do not have, I have not had any contact with the new owners, but I know that they were sold. No, I could look, um, I can send information from GIS, but I don't <coughs> have a name. Not a problem. Oh, thank you so much. Nothing else for Amy. We'll let her go to the back and swallow her and water. Cough. <laughs> hey, Amy, thank you for the Brownfield study on the study session last week. That was most oh, you're appreciative. Welcome. And, and I think that a lot of commissioners have a better understanding of the cloudy mess that <laughs> can be brown, Brownfield financing. Oh, thank you very much. And as I said at that meeting, when you do have a constituent question or just a question about the documents, please feel free to contact us and we'll get an answer to you. Thank you. That was very helpful. Thank you. It. We appreciated the opportunity. So helpful. Uh, next up, we have facilities. Uh, tower building, chimney, asbestos, abatement. Welcome, Rick. Good morning, Mr. Chair, Commissioners. In front of you, you have a proposal to uh, remove the rest of the asbestos lining in our chimney here at the tower. Okay, I see we have one local vendor. Yes. Um, Don't think we did before, did we? This is, a, this, the, uh, this is the same crew that we used the last time when we had that unscheduled collapse, mm -hmm. and they did an outstanding job. I just think because of the delicate nature of what we're dealing with, I'd like to have the same folks. Will this take care of the chimney from top to bottom then? Or? From top to bottom. All right. Okay, so we need... Uh, do this all in one motion. Uh, Forty-two thousand five hundred dollars for asbestos abatement services services from ALAM of Jackson. Another eighty thousand dollars to International Chimney Corporation of Juliet, Illinois, and then a twenty percent uh, uh, contingency of uh, twenty-four thousand five hundred dollars for unseen issues. Uh, well, that's all for the chimney and the asbestos removal and uh, new lining. Questions? Discussion? Mr. Chair, I have a question. Darius. Uh, good morning. How are you? Good, sir. Good. Just uh, one question for you. The company out of Joliet, have we done any work with them before? We have. They're the folks who uh, repaired the liner of the chimney when it collapsed the first time. And they've also have done the follow-up inspections until oh. we could get to the point where we're at today. 
So was it this the company from here that's uh, from Jackson and in Joliet? They both have done work here. Yes, they have. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood that. Okay, no. thank you. Great questions. Um, <coughs> is it two years ago? Okay, so I, have, I have a question. I have a question. Ahead, yes, please. is there no local company that can do the chimney work? No, there's actually only two companies in the country that can do this work. Okay. I'm no, that's, I found out yeah. doing the research. It's highly specialized. Okay, thank you. Oh, not a problem. And this is a, a not to exceed approval. Uh, so the maximum cost is one forty six five. Could come in lower. Should come in lower. Without any unforeseen. You need a motion support. So moved. Support. support. We have motion support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Good job. As Thank you, sir. Next up, we have Parks. Jeff, welcome. Oh, okay. Welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, so this morning we brought to you a facility rental agreement that will be used for the new American One Credit Union Event Center. So with the new building, this is a little more formalized uh, than what we currently use at the existing building. Uh, it's meant to protect the building and give us an organized and clear way to, to book the new facility. Uh, we developed it by talking to similar uh, event centers around the Midwest and working with the county's legal counsel. Um, we've had a lot of conversations, a lot of interest in booking the facility, so having this uh, approved will give us uh, what we need to finalize getting some of those on the calendar. And this is all done by an attorney, correct? Very yes. reviewed? Yep. Very thorough, Kyle. Uh, questions? Discussion? Okay, need a motion to support uh, to move the rental agreement for the, the fair Kyle or Keeley Park forward? You have motion support? Word. All in favor of the gate saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Thank you, board. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. Welcome. Welcome. This is the new contract for hiring entertainment for the fair uh, that happens this year on August 4th through the 11th. It's a uh, contractual arrangement that's been in place for many, many years, or this type of contractual arrangement. Um, you, you basically buy your, uh, your entertainment through a third party who works with the uh, national talent agencies directly. So we have uh, put together a new agreement. It's been reviewed by our insurance company. It's been reviewed by our attorneys and wordsmithed uh, a lot and uh, is uh, ready for approval. This is the same contract, maybe a little bit update to it, but yes. the same as yes. we've been using? Yeah. Any questions, concerns, uh, discussion? I need a motion and support. So moved. Okay, we have a motion and support. All in favor, indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the same. Passes unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you. Jeff? Jeff, Jeff, before you go, <coughs> if I may, Phil, yes. go ahead. I have a challenge for, for the parks. I know I've never put any before you. <laughs> Google is still calling it the fairgrounds. Yes. Can we, have we worked on calling it Keeley Park with them? I haven't, or my staff haven't called them directly, but we can work on that. Yeah, what that's what I would do done. is talk to Scott. And Some of the Google Maps still show it as the armory also. Correct. So we'll see if we can get that straightened out. <laughs> All right. Next up, uh, 4F, finance. Welcome, Cecilia. So I'm here to, um, to report on the March financial statements. Um, as you can see, we're at 25% of our budget. That's like our benchmark. Um, for expenditures, we are below that benchmark. But for ex revenues, I'm gonna, we're going to get into a little bit more detail regarding our revenues in the next couple of pages. So, But if we go ahead and turn and look at page 2 and 3, are there any questions that anyone has regarding the expenditures as they are at March? Questions? 
No okay. questions. Thank you. So yep. if we go I, ahead I have and a question. Go ahead. Have we heard yet from the state on revenue sharing for next year? We, they're on the website, they have a, an expected amount what we're going to get for revenue sharing. It's about the same. It's pretty stable. <clears throat> but on the next page, when we talk about on page four um, on the revenues, I have gone through e line by line for each department, and I have a note as to um, when we're expecting the revenues. Um, one thing, if you look on the county treasurer, I did pull out the budgeted taxes, so we have a, gen a better understanding where we're at at the end of March um, regarding our revenues. And I do make a note at the bottom where, you know, you know, um, where if we without the t revenue for taxes, we're really a short 1.75 percent for revenue. Um, I do note for Department of Aging, that is very common for them. That's normal to be about two, day, two months behind in bill, uh, receiving billings. They are, rev they are departments that we do book receivables at year end, so that is very common. Um, one thing I do want to note whenever we're looking at miscellaneous non-departmental, we do have a budget amount of $200,000. Um, it's very unlikely we're going to have, we're going to receive that because of um, that we, those are revenues that if we have monies at the end of the year from the insurance company for MMRA, they can give it back. But we also can also tell them to keep it for future claims. So I would rather um, just go ahead and know now that we're most likely, even though we've budgeted, we're not going to have it. Um, I can't do a budget amendment right now because I don't really know what expenditures those are tied to. But going forward, when we're starting to work on our 20 budget and going forward, we're not going to have that in our budget because it's not certain that we're going to receive that. Does that make sense? Any questions at all? Okay, we, I see the, uh, the legal system here. We're like way over a uh, prosecuting attorney, public defender. Is this reflecting a high number of High profile cases, or we're like 40% <coughs> instead of 25. I can ask them. I haven't, um, no, the I ones that have been over, I haven't been worried about them. But yes, I can definitely, you know, just see if there's something different. Maybe the, re maybe the budget, maybe it's something we could do a budget amendment personally, you know, I can ask them about that. Okay. Um, I, I have a question. Go ahead. Just go ahead, Commissioner Kennedy. <coughs> Life waste maintenance. Seems to be a little high as well. And I'm just. <coughs> so with but what does that entail? Okay. So with life maintenance, that's another one where we're going to amend. We're going to change how we're budgeting the revenue going forward for 20. But in the past, they do have a contract of, of revenue that they do receive because they do do what? Um, this. Sorry. <laughs> um, it's just in my way. I get it. Okay. Um, Okay, I want to talk to Quinn. Okay. <laughs> um, we do have a contract with Lifeways for work that we do with we do with them, and they do bill that contract. But what we've also have budgeted in the past, and it's including a 19's budget, of additional $40,000 of additional services that we may not do. So this is another situation where we've budgeted revenue that's not certain that we're going to receive it. So we're going to change the process and the philosophy of how we're going to do our 20 budget. But it is budgeted in there for this year. And we haven't received anything in addition to our normal contract. So that's why our budget is low for that, too. So you said you're budgeting for additional services, so you're anticipating the, more issues? Or just maybe additional services that we might do, but we might not do. Okay. You know, it's one of those situations that, that they've done that in the past. But it's something that we need to address going forward. What, how I want to budget revenues, and I think Mr. Overton agrees with me, Mike, is that it's only certain revenues for sure that we're going to get, not these hopeful revenues. <laughs> because when you budget the revenue, you're budgeting the expenditures, and people are going to spend that money, even if we aren't receiving the revenue. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. So we want to have a really good, strong revenue budget so we can have a good, strong expenditure budget so we're meeting our targets any further questions thank you for your report okay 
Um, so the next thing I have is regarding um, is, amend is amendments for um, a general fund. So what I've done, because I want to have a good strong expenditure line item for our budget too whenever I'm starting to budget for expenditures for 20. And um, so what I was finding is that we had the money, but it was just in different places. So I took a payroll in March um, with all of our benefits, analyzed it out to the end of the year, because it has the raises in there. It also has people's, what, the actual expenditures for health insurance or that type of thing that the actual cost and I looked at our budget and I did a budget amendment that away just so we can actually have good strong budget from that standpoint I also in included in here some majority of the 90 per 99 percent of this is wages and fringes the other thing I went ahead and added in here because I do know that our insurance for MMRA has gone up this year so there's an additional two hundred thirty five thousand dollar cost it's on the last page and also um, for our consultant for our strategic planning that wasn't budgeted either. So I added that into our budget too for this amendment just to have a good strong expenditure budget. These are reflective of what we expect our true costs and revenue to yes. be. Yes. Yes. Further questions? I don't need a motion and support uh, to approve the budget amendment. We have a motion and support. Uh, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Passes unanimously. Thank you, Cecilia. All right, you guys have a good day. Okay, for H, this is for our administrator, the TIF resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chair. It has uh, come to our attention that um, Brooklyn, Village of Brooklyn, has created a uh, what is it? A corridor improvement authority, uh, and that is a ca tax capturing authority. Um, it has been the practice of the county, and uh, we look back, and I think the last one uh, we came across that we had done something similar to this was in 2008, where we opted out of a, a Blackman uh, TIF. Same approach. What the policy has been is we will opt out of these tax capturing entities, and then uh, if there's some particular project that they bring forward that the board uh, supports and wants to fund, they can opt in for that, is the way it's been uh, explained to me. We haven't actually opted in uh, to anything in the last eight years or so. But um, that's why you have in front of you here, we have roughly 60 days from the time they adopt, and they adopted, I think it was April 9th. Um, so we need to finish this up by our Tuesday night meeting. Well, we could go into next month if you, we need to, but no real reason to. Uh, in my mind, uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're not necessarily saying that what they're trying to do is good or bad. We're just saying that we aren't going to um, just give um, them the county's tax capture uh, without further explanation on a particular project. Questions? Steve. <coughs> As Mike explained, the, the opt-out also in the, from, from past boards has been utilized because you only get one chance to opt out. Um, you would be perpetually going on forward giving them the $55,000 to the entity plus all appreciation whereas by having a contracted agreement we're there for the capital improvement or whatever it is that they're particularly doing <clears throat> but afterwards we're able to provide services countywide to this and at current time the county uh, if you would, gives a little bit over a million dollars a year to the different LDFAs and DDAs within the within the county, and uh, that revenue, as you know, our budget has a tendency to be very tight, and this would be this is one opportunity where we can assist a township uh, with their plan and be available to go forward if we deem it appropriate. I just want to make sure my understanding is correct. So if we're to deny this, <coughs> the village of Brooklyn could bring forth a project, and if this board deemed it a good thing, we could vote yes, and, and the project could be taken care of uh, in simple terms. Scott, is that correct? Okay, thank you. 
And as I understand it, that's not at the full fifty-five thousand dollars a year. We could approve half. It would be negotiated. Any amount in the contract. Right. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a separate. Questions? Not any to motion support uh, to move this forward to the full board. So moved. Support. We have a motion and support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed the same. Passes unanimously. They'll be glad to hear it. Next up, uh, we have the administrator controller again. This would be uh, administrative assistant reclassification. The, uh, the, the staff report, uh, for the most part, speaks for itself. However, I failed to mention that given this position is very close, uh, you know, it's in my office, very close, I had asked um, the HR department to take it and uh, to tabulate it through our system that we use for uh, basically valuing uh, what someone does or doesn't do. We've added some duties, as I explained. Um, currently, the employee makes $24.16 an hour. Uh, we are moving them up here in category, uh, given the additional responsibilities. And their new uh, hourly wage will be $27.92, which is, what is roughly $58,000. So they go roughly fifty to fifty-eight dollars on this position. Uh, I think this is, um, well, in all, all honesty, I think it's somewhat overdue. Um, and that's... Uh, uh, that's my fault. Um, you know how it is. You, you go along and everything's doing right, going well, and then all of a sudden you, you keep adding responsibilities and things to uh, a position, and then one day you wake up and go, oh, you know what, we really need to relook at this position and take a look at this. So that's why I asked HR to reclassify uh, the position and do the, do the, do the, uh, the point factoring. Yes, sir. Commissioner Kennedy. When was the last time a raise was given to this position? They get an annual raise like anyone else, so they got a 2% raise. Uh, okay. COLA raise. This is above and beyond that. Yes. Okay. Well, any other questions? Discussion? If not, I need a motion of support to approve this and send to the full board. So Okay, we have a motion of support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, <coughs> the same. Passes unanimously. Thank you, board. Next up, we have an administrator controller again. This is uh, policy 3280, employee recognition. Um, I think it speaks for itself, but Deborah, would you like to elaborate? This um, policy is being updated to align with current practices. Um, due to financial restraints um, over the past many years, the policy was not um, as practiced because there were obviously financial constraints due to budget restrictions. Um, so we wanted to align with current practice, and uh, that's the reason it's being updated. Discussion? <coughs> no discussion. Get a motion and support. So okay, we have a motion and support. Uh, all in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, the same for oppo opposition. Pass this unanimously. This will be going to the full board next. Go, go on to... <coughs> Item five, uh, we have the claims. Uh, it's for two months. Arches claims and April's claims. Uh, we'll take care of it with one motion. We have motion support. All in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed the same. Passes unanimously. Uh, we have our other minutes. Uh, I don't believe there are any. Didn't see any last night. Let me check. No, no other business. Uh, June reporting schedule there for you to look at. Uh, item six, uh, public comment. We have no public. Uh, committee member comments. Commissioner Kennedy. Talked to uh, Mr. Overton off the record a little while ago, and I anticipate that we're going to have some more individuals from around the Cascades area that will probably be at our next meeting. And... Uh, I just want to make sure that we're moving forward. You've briefed me on the emails that it's really uh, the drain commissioner's responsibility to do this study, but I, I really think we should get the ball rolling uh, and be proactive rather than reactive in regards to 
these individuals that are upset about their homes flooding. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, I just had a conversation this morning with uh, the, our text conversation here with uh, the city manager, and he tells me they're putting a resolution on the agenda tomorrow, uh, basically uh, asking the drain commissioner to um, you know, create a drain. Uh, my response to him has been uh, is much the same. That's been where we are: is put it together a resolution asking the drain commissioner to, um, you know, to study the problem and make a recommendation for a um, uh, a solution. Uh, the drain commissioner has, uh, in our conversations, has said uh, he's willing to do that. We just need to ask him to do it. So we've just been putting together a resolution. Uh, if um, if the city actually does follow through tomorrow with a resolution. Uh, I suspect we may very well bring that Tuesday night for you guys' consideration as well next week. Thank you. Any further comments? Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Bye.